Welcome back, True Seeker. NFL Week 5 has concluded. At the end of this week, there are two undefeated teams. The New England Patriots, who are 5-0. Keep in mind, Washington equals 50. So does Brady. At the beginning of the year, we said the Patriots look like a lock to start 5-0 after beating Washington. So you have the 5-0 Patriots. And you have the 4-0 49ers. One team in the AFC, the other in the NFC. 5-4, and four, paying tribute to the Super Bowl number this year, 54. And what's the parallel between Brady and the 49ers? Well, there's a couple. The quarterback for the 49ers is Jimmy Garoppolo, who was the backup to Tom Brady. And at the beginning of last year, there was a little bit of a contrived beef in the media, Garoppolo making comments that maybe he was better than Brady, who was getting up in his years. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, supposedly his knee got hurt. Anyway, 5-0 and Brady, 4-0 and Garoppolo. Year of Super Bowl 54, Tom Brady's from the Bay Area, grew up idolizing Joe Montana. We learned a lot this year about the number 118 in the Bay Area. Today was 118 days after Joe Montana's birthday. If you weren't subscribed to my old channel, my 18th channel was deleted. We did a lot of work this year on the Bay Area and 118 and just learned how significant that number is to that city as well as the date August 11th. So how interesting that tonight, 118 days after Joe Montana's birthday, the first time the 49ers are 4-0 since 1990, 29 years ago. And football equals 29 in Gematria. So anyway, let's talk about the rigging tonight, why we had 49ers picked to be the winner, why we thought number 22 was going to have a big night for the 49ers. We thought he'd score two touchdowns, which he did. And um, he began the game off, first play of the game, 83-yard touchdown. Football equals 83, Cleveland Browns equals 83. And before you're new here and we go through this, again, let's make sure we understand what Chimatri is, the practice coding numbers into words. So I'm going to write out Cleveland Browns. All of these numbers are significant. There's four ciphers. The first is the alphabetic order. Cleveland Browns 169, which has a square root of 13. Think about the big star on the team this year, Odell Beckham. 61, Ohio equals 61, the birthplace of football. The 236, there's probably something to that number besides 2 plus 3 plus 6 is 11, the master number, the number of people on each player and team. There's probably something in 236 that I don't know yet. I don't know everything. But 83, that's a big one. 83 is what we call the football number. They say the best QB draft class in the NFL was the class of 83. Football 83, Cleveland Browns 83. The game begins with an 83-yard touchdown run by number 22. And why did we like number 22 to score two touchdowns? Because it was the 222nd day of number 22's age. Is that a lot of twos? 222nd day of age, 222, number 22. Why not score two touchdowns, which he did? So anyway, these numbers, so significant. Football's 43. That's the 14th prime number. Today, the 49ers ended a losing streak in October of 14 games. If you write out the word end, it equals 14. Okay? So, Browns 49ers. You notice how National Football League equals 122, so does San Francisco, which is on the 122nd meridian. Just using the alphabetic order, San Francisco is 122. Again, our four ciphers, the alphabetic order, the alphabetic order with the rules numerology. Remember when San Francisco was 5-0 and in Super Bowls? Remember when they hosted Super Bowl 50? On the 38th day of the year, gold equals 38, so does Colorado, which is the 38th state who won Super Bowl 50, the golden anniversary. Anyway, you got the alphabetic order, the alphabetic order with the rules numerology, the reverse alphabetic order, the reverse alphabetic order with the rules numerology. Tonight before the game was played, the head referee, the 49ers were 7 and 6 with that referee on the field. Tonight they improved to 8 and 6. So, San Francisco 122 on the 122nd meridian and Jimmy G became 12 and 2 as a starter tonight by winning. Notice National Football League National Football League equals 122. And tonight, an NFL record was set. Notice National Football League is also 85. Today, October 7th, leaves 
85 days left in the year. And it was 29 years ago on this day was the last time the 49ers were 4-0. 4-7. 4 on the 7. If you know my work, you know about 47-74. We won't go there right now. Anyway, 85 days left in the year. Guess what? Number 85 for the 49ers had a big game. Picking up big third down conversion, scoring a touchdown. We had him pegged to have a nice game. How's number 85, the number that represents the National Football League, not going to play well on the day leaving 85 days left in the year? In the theater by the numbers that is professional sports. So, today, the 49ers set a record. The 49ers set a record today. They had a chance to win their 49th football game on Monday Night Football. Here it is right here. To become number one. The 49ers are now number one in the NFL with 49 wins on Monday Night Football. And, um, again, they're the 49ers. But notice, special number. NFL's 49. All night, if you watch the game, they talked about the kicker, the Scottish Hammer. American football credited to Scottish writer Freemasonry. Scottish is 49. America, 49. You see how America's 32? Look at NFL. NFL's 32 and 49 like America. 32 teams. You know. Scottish is 32 and 49. Scottish Hammer kicking the ball all over the place tonight. Anyway. Tonight, the 49ers won their 49th record game, and Jimmy G became 12-2. And, and they're the 49ers. San Francisco's 122. National Football League's 122. NFL's 49. You see how perfect this ritual is? And then what a day for a record. The day leaving 85 days left in the year, right? So... This is what can get tricky. At the end of my live stream today, I stuck with the 49ers, but a guy called in and he gave me this observation, which I had to verify, and it made me go, hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm still going to stick with the 49ers. But he called in and he said, I don't know. He goes, I don't know if the 49ers are going to win because they can get their 487th franchise loss in the regular season. That's the 93rd prime, and Monday Night Football equals 93. And I looked it up. I was like, wow, that's true. I was like, you know what? I I've seen things like that. Sometimes they do hit, but the 49er ritual just looked really strong tonight. And this is why picking games can be tricky, you know? So, but you got to figure out what the best narrative is. And here was also what I explained in the live stream. Earlier this year, we had the Browns pegged to beat the Jets. And um, in that game, Baker Mayfield became 7-8 and eight as a starter on Monday Night Football when the Browns won in New York in the old stadium that Odell Beckham used to play in. And notice, Baker Mayfield became 7-8 and eight in that game. Cleveland equals 78, right? And it was in New York. And New York is 78. And tonight, the 49ers had a chance to improve to 7-8 and eight at home against the Browns all time. Guess what San Francisco 49ers equals? 78. And remember all this Scottish right stuff? Scottish right is 78. Even Jesuits 78. They play a part in it as well. Jesuits, Scottish right... Unholy alliances, major stranglehold on sports, rituals with them every year, season after season, sport after sport. Anyway, 78. And because the 49ers won tonight, they became 7-8. and eight. Cleveland, San Francisco, 49ers, 78. It was the first Monday night game of October, the month that sums to 78, right? So... And what else was strange that we noticed is today's 71 days to the Jesuit Pope's birthday. Catholic equals 71. And usually these games that sync with the Pope, the Jesuit rituals come through, which is a 78 number. So anyway, Jimmy G, Catholic guy, probably Jesuit. A lot of the athletes are. You know, it's not just Jimmy G. There's probably a whole bunch on the 49ers and on the Browns. Anyway. With Mayfield, he had a chance to become 5-5 five and five or 4-6. Four and six. Tricky because 49ers is 55, but Levi's Stadium where they play is 46. So, anyway, we went with Jimmy G becoming 12-2. And, two, and uh, the 78 ritual and the 49ers ending the losing streak of 14 in October. Because football is 43, the 14th prime, end equals 14. So often in sports, streaks will get to 14 if they're close, or they'll end at 14. So... There were some devil's advocate narratives. One that could have gone in Cleveland's favor is had they won, home teams would have been 3-3 three and three on Monday Night Football for the year. MNF is 33. Cleveland's 33. That warranted some thought. But the better riddle for tonight was that by the 49ers winning, home teams became 
and 8 for NFL Week 5. 30 teams played this week, 15 games. Home teams were 7 and 8. And here, I'll just show you that real quick just in case you doubt it. That was another clincher tonight for the 78 ritual, which we already witnessed once on Monday Night Football with the Browns. So the Seahawks won. So home teams were 1-0. and Bengals lost 1-1. One and one. Titans lost 1-2. and two. Raiders won, even though it was really in London, 2-2. Two and two. Saints win 3-2. Three and two. Giants lose 3-3. Three and three. Eagles win 4-3. Four and three. Steelers lose 4-4. Four and four. Redskins 4-5. Four and five. Panthers 5-5. Five and five. Texans 6-5. Six Chargers 6-6. Six and six. Cowboys 6-7. Six and seven. Chiefs 6-8. Six and eight. And keep in mind, this game was on the day leaving 86 days left in the year. And by the Colts winning, away teams became 8-6. and six. Colts had some very interesting riddles, as we covered yesterday, to upset. And um, 49ers, by winning, made it 7-8 and eight at home for another 78. And like I explained to people, when you observe a pattern that happens with a team in a year, it's usually going to happen again. And again and again, and it'll probably persist throughout a season at a ratio of at least 80%. That's why if you can pick up on a pattern with the team during a season, you can just follow it and be patient and exploit that pattern. So, For the uh, position players, let's see. Come down to the position players. This Debo Samuel was getting the start tonight. We thought that was interesting because it was 100 days from his upcoming birthday. It's the 100th NFL season. His name equaled 102. Monday Night Football equals 102. Jimmy G had a chance to improve to 10-2 and two with the 49ers and 12-2 and two in total, which he did. George Kittle, number 85. The name Kittle equals 85. Again, this is why you want to know these ciphers. See, Kittle's 85 when you run the alphabetic order in reverse. Kittle, 85, just like national football's. League is 85, just like how today left 85 days left in the year. So, nice connection. Marquise Goodwin, today was 322 days after his birthday. He's played well on Monday Night Football historically. Um, he came in with 13 career touchdowns. We speculated that if he did catch two, he might get to 15. MNF's 15, it was possible. But this guy right here is who we talked about the most. Number 22 on his 222nd day of his age. I mean, that's a lot of twos. Running backs, you know, here and there will pick up two touchdowns. It seemed like a perfect night for him to get two touchdowns, which he did. He started the game, two touchdowns, put the 49ers up 14-0, including an 83-yard run. Again, football's 83, Cleveland Browns is 83. Coleman. He made his debut after his injury, coming back on the day leaving 85 days left in the year. His full name equals 85. First, middle, and last name. You got to get the full name. And um, thought he might have a good game because of that. There was a chance he could get to two touchdowns. He picked up one himself. But again, nobody had the riddle like Mr. Super Tubes. And uh, Dante Pettis, sometimes I wonder if scripts do get messed up a little bit because Dante Pettis seemed like he was able to catch that ball and score a touchdown there late. He dropped one that would have been gimme touchdown, and then they kicked a field goal. But I wonder about that because they won by 28. Today's October 7th, like 107, the 28th prime. Might have meant to be that way. These guys drop way too many balls to get paid what they do. But... Um, Cleveland, their star receivers, Odell Beckham and Landry. What's real interesting is it was 337 days from Beckham's birthday, which is the 68th prime. San Francisco equals 68. Just like how San Francisco was 6-8 and eight at home versus the Browns before this game. And Landry, it was 313 days after his birthday. San Francisco 49ers equals 65. So both of these guys have this connection to San Francisco and they're playing San Francisco tonight. And like I explained to people, that, that's what can be tricky about this with fantasy. Sometimes with a connection like that, they might just destroy San Francisco. But like I said, that could also be the kind of night where like San Francisco shuts them down. They make mistakes that help the other team win the game. <laughs> I don't think it was Landry tonight. I know it wasn't Beckham who um, muffed the catch at the goal line that ended up in a big interception. I mean, nobody gets paid millions of dollars to play their sport and they can't make these plays. The National Fixed League is what it is. And, oh yeah, I want to just go back about Odell Beckham. <laughs> you see how Odell Beckham equals 233? 
Do you remember what the score of the last Monday night football game was where he dominated at his old stadium, the Jets? The score was 23-3. to And um, the new name of the uh, Cleveland Browns stadium, whatever it is, it equals 233. So... Browns is 91 as well. Look at Odell Beckham. You know, these guys are born to play on the teams they are. 91's the 13th triangular number, like how he wears 13. You got 1 through 13 together it equals 91. 233 is the 13th Fibonacci number. So, just realize these superstars, born and bred to be, named accordingly, you know, their scripted careers, what teams they go to, none of it's their control. But, um,. I thought Mayfield was going to put up two touchdowns tonight. He would have got to 33 career touchdowns. That's a huge number on Monday Night Football. That, that's my biggest surprise out of the position players is that Mayfield didn't pick up two touchdowns tonight. But it was all about selling that 49er defense. So, Anyway, it was a great NFL week. And... Um, Again, the beauty of this knowledge is you can take advantage of the rigging. And you don't have to bet a lot to win a lot. Um, you know, here's a guy who left a thank you comment. He says, thanks, Jamatra FX Sports, Zach Hubbard, for the knowledge anyone can use to level up a little. So, this guy put together a parlay for $50 by the 49ers winning tonight. The only thing he was waiting on when he posted this, he won $2,692 off 50 bucks. And that's what happens in gambling if you put parlays together, because most gamblers cannot hit parlays. Parlays, the most challenging thing in sport. But with this knowledge and understanding the scripting, you can hit, and a lot of people do often. And I advise people to put together parlays of two teams, three teams, four teams, because you'll hit those at a lot higher percentage than this. But you know, people hit these parlays often. They call in, they comment, they take aware of situational betting online because when you understand the script, you can see where the score is probably going to go next a lot of the time, you know, because these games are so predictable when you have this knowledge. This guy bet 50 and made 2,700, right? And, and realize this happens a lot, but people send the text messages today. Trolls are always active. Let me get myself out of here. Here's another parlay. So this guy was pending last night. All he was waiting on to see... He won on the Patriots, he won on the Saints, he won on the Broncos, he was waiting on the Colts, and he won on a fight. The Colts won last night. So this bet right here where he bet $25 paid $2,704. And notice, he only has five teams in there. It's because we saw that there were great riddles this week for the Chargers to beat the Chiefs, or excuse me, the Chargers to get beat by the Broncos, and for the Colts to beat the Chiefs. And this is how gambling lines work when you take big risks. They're huge parlay multipliers. Last week, people did this because we saw how the Bucks could beat the Rams. You know, This knowledge, you don't have to risk a lot of money to make a lot of money. That is the point. Everyone can use extra grocery money. Okay? Yesterday, we got a whole bunch of games right and one wrong. And the game I got wrong, I'm really kicking myself for because I shouldn't even have included it. I knew it was too close, but I thought I had, I thought I was going to be right about it, even though it was really too close to call. And um, had I not thrown in there, you know, some people got extra greedy and they threw that game in their parlays too and it murdered them. Just that one wrong game. But, um, you know, had they not been greedy and had they listened, because I did say, I said, this game's the one with the least behind it, but I just feel it. Well... I, I should have just kept my lips shut on that one. But um, anyway, the point is, with this knowledge, you don't have to risk a lot to win a lot. Think about it. 25, 2700, that means he can play 100 more times a $25 bet like this, and he only has to hit on one of those to come out ahead again. And of course, he's going to hit on more than one out of the next 100. $25 just bought him 100 more plays at riddles like this. So Anyway. Sports are fixed. It's uh it's undeniable. Every week when you have this knowledge, you can see what they're doing with halftime scores. This week the score was 21 to 3 at halftime. Monday night football 2-1-3. 68 net Passing yards for the Browns, San Francisco equals 68. Jimmy Garoppolo with 46 yards at the half. 
The name of the stadium, 46. Uh, Mayfield fell to four and six away. Again, that long 83-yarder to open the game. Cleveland Browns, 83. Football, 83. 14 carries at the half. Football, 43. The 14th prime. 49ers on their way to ending that losing streak in October of 14, just like how they started with a 14-0 lead. <laughs> yeah. 100 yards of receiving for the 100th NFL season and 46 for Levi Stadium. I mean, pretty lackluster stats for a game that had accumulated 24 points. So. Anyhow, just wanted to make sure that information's out there. We can actually check the final box score, too, and see what happened. Look at that. Look at that. The... Oh my goodness, the Browns at the end of the game had net 78 passing yards. And that's what we decided the game was all about. You know, that's the, here's what I wrote for my notes. Let's just go back to the notes. The sentence I wrote about why I like the 49ers. <laughs> it's all about 78. And then you get 78 net passing yards. And you know, I mean, we've been doing this for six years straight, but it, it never stops being amusing. You know, it's just, it's comedy, man. So, you know, where's my note? Where's my conclusion note? So many notes. All right, so pick. I favor the 78 riddle with Monday Night Football, which leans 49ers. I also like that they can end their October losing streak at 14. And then I'll always give the devil's advocate scenario. Best case scenario for Cleveland is to drop home teams to 3-3 three and three on MNF because MNF and Cleveland are 33. But again, if you listen to the live stream, we explain why 78 is the number. It's the one we're rolling with. It's the one that's already been good for us. And look at what you get in the box score. Cleveland was 78 net passing yards. Cleveland 78, San Francisco 49ers 78, New York 78, where the NFL League office is, where Baker Mayfield became 7-8 and eight on Monday Night Football a few weeks back. <laughs> it's just, man, it's just, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. 102 total rushing yards, Monday Night Football 102, numbers we covered. I'm going to have to look at them a couple times. Keitel, Mr. 85 on the day leaving 85 days left in the year, leads the team receiving. Um, yeah, pretty ugly game, though. Pretty ugly game, so... Anyway, 78, it was the number of the night, and there it is right there. Scripted from the final score to the box score, like I've been preaching since I started doing this years ago. 10,000 correct predictions ago, you know what I mean? So. Let me see something. I'm curious about... Um, Yeah, there it is. So the Twins have one less fight in them. I'm going to hang out and see what happens with uh, the Yankees-Twins game. I don't ever speak on things until they're over. I believe in jinxes, but... Let me see what the box scores in this game. See if I can get a laugh here. So, all right. Louie, right? Luis Severino, if you know anything about the baseball game tonight, the most pure cipher, Louis 16. Louis 16, right? I wonder if um, they could make this last inning exciting. I wonder if um, we could see the Twins score a couple runs. That's what I'm going to watch for to see if... Well, actually, if the Yankees close it out 5-1, I know what they're doing there. If the Twins score a couple runs, that'd be something I'd be interested to see. I'll tell you why all this is in a second. But Severino, or Louie, his first name equals 16. If the Yankees win tonight, it's going to be their 16th straight win against the Twins in the postseason. And where they play is called Target Field. 
which in the most pure cipher equals 53, the 16th prime number, right? So it's like, hmm, perfect place to win the 16th straight, just like how you had 16 points last year in Super Bowl 53. Which, by the way, you know, if you ever go to my Patreon, you'll see it's flooded with trolls and losers. It's because I'm helping people beat bookies and casinos. And I don't think any other gambling advice site in the world can say that, honestly. You know, I helped a guy win $300,000 on the Super Bowl last year, you know. Can anybody else say that they helped somebody win 300000 on last year's Super Bowl? Because he went down to Vegas and he said, Zach, you got to give me the winning pick right now. Right before the season started, I said, if I'm betting on the Super Bowl today, I'm taking the Patriots to beat the Los Angeles Rams. It's the best scenario. It's all about the Patriots coming in with 523 wins, the 99th prime for the 99th NFL season, New England's 99, Patriots 99, the rematch against the Rams. You got Aaron Donald, born May 23rd, 523, like 523, the 99th prime. He wears number 99, Aaron Donald's 99. He ended his holdout 99 days after his birthday. And, um, and then the ultimate kicker was Los Angeles 53, Patriots 53, which again is the 16th prime. You get a 16-point Super Bowl, 13-3, to because football's 133, right? L.A.'s 13. Game got put away with a 41-yard field goal. 41 is the 13th prime. Super Bowl equals 41. Tom Brady was 41 years old. You know. So, anyway, this knowledge gives you insights into sports that you just can't get anywhere else. You listen to all this commentary about, oh, who's got the best run defense, the best pass defense, blah, blah, blah. None of that means jack shit when the script says, tonight you're playing defense with Velociraptor arms. You know, anyone who saw that long run in the Redskins game, that long touchdown against the Patriots, case of the uh, Velociraptor arms, right? Defenders all have their arms tucked in against their chest and are bumping into the guy and the announcer's like, oh, look at the break tackles. It's like, uh, those does, that doesn't count as breaking tackles when the defenders have tucked in their arms and aren't even trying to tackle them. I don't know what to call that. So anyway. But oh, what I was going to say about Louis' pitch count. Where's Severino at? What did I do with it? I guess I got off the MLB. No outs, one on. Because see, what I'm thinking is, okay, if the Yankees win 5-1, Houston Astros equals 51, who they likely would play next. They'll either play the Astros or the Rays. The Astros are up 2-1. to one. At the um, All-Star break, only two teams had 57 wins in the AL. One had it in the NL, only two in the AL. And they were the Yankees, who got it on July 5th, their 57th win on 5-7. And the Astros, who got it the day after the Yankees, World Series equals 57. So, anyway, I was like, I think they're foreshadowing what the ALCS is. But anyway, Houston Astros equals 51, most pure cipher. Seems to be a big number in Texas, because Houston Texans is 51. They hosted Super Bowl 51. It's got to be something greater to that. Uh oh, I see multiple runners on now. This is this is how baseball is now. Baseball is such a gimmicky sport, nobody has a closer. In, in the ninth inning, you know, a four-run lead isn't safe this season. Baseball is just so crazy this year. Because um, it, it's all about getting, it's just like the NFL. It's like the NFL, the whole game's close, and then all of a sudden there's two minutes left. Nobody's been able to move the ball, but in the final two minutes, you just, you're the hot knife through butter in the NFL. That's how the ninth inning is now in baseball. No one can score all game, and then... Anyway, sports, they're just trying, it's just a ratings grab. Get people to hang in there till the end, you know, all the situational betting, all these really long games this year with baseball. It's just, my dad, who's a baseball enthusiast, he's like, it's not baseball anymore. It's like slugfest. It's nonsense. My dad's finally seeing that the sports are scripted based on how stupid baseball is this year. He's a baseball purist, and he's a big Yankees fan, and he's already in bed. He doesn't stay up late. Not even for the Yankees, but um, anyway, interesting to see what happens at the end of that game there. So, yeah, baseball, something else. Today, um, today, Charlie Morton was the starting pitcher for the Rays and Astros. Charlie Morton won the World Series with the Astros in 2017. And Charlie Morton was a key part of that team. Great pitching in the postseason. 
That was the Astros' 56th season, right? The Astros' 56th season. And today, the Astros picked up their 56th loss of the year facing Charlie Morton, their old pitcher who now plays for the Rays, on a date with 56 numerology. And the Astros' starting pitcher, his name was Zach Greinke, which equals 56. And here's why Gematria can be tough. Zach Greinke equals 56, but his name also equals 110. And had the Astros won today, they would have got their 110th win of the season. And, you know, it was a tough call today. A lot of my people, they just really wanted to go Astros. But I was explaining to people, I was like, the Astros is like a public mind control right now because everyone thinks they're unbeatable. That's what the mainstream's pushing. And I said, don't sleep on this 56. That was a big number of the year the Astros won the World Series. So anyway, the Rays do win today. They hang on for another day in a 56 ritual, which is all about Charlie Morton paying tribute to the year he won the World Series with the Astros. And um, Let's see. No outs, runner on second base, two runners on. I'm going to laugh if the Yankees finish this game 5-3. I'll laugh even harder if the Twins tie it up at 5-5. But 5-3 uh, would be fitting because, again, the name of the ballpark is 53. It's the 16th prime number. And, again, if the Yankees win tonight, Louie was on the mound. We got one out now. We got one out. We'll see what happens. But uh, Louie was on the mound, numbers, his name equals 16, trying to give the Yankees the 16th straight win in the postseason versus the Twins. <laughs> and consider the Yankees got their 104th win of the season on October 4th, winning with a score of 10-4, to and then they got their 105th win on October 5th. Oh, we got two outs. Two outs, two runners on. If they hold them at 5-1, that's a signal for who they play next. You can go back and look at the year the Houston Astros won the uh, World Series. They won that last game 5-1, which we said was a score to look for before the game was played. Big number for the Astros. And um, here, just while we're on the topic, bring up one of the uh, mainstream articles written making fun of me. So, this was about the, uh, the 113th World Series where the Astros beat the Dodgers. I put out the prediction at the end of August, Astros would defeat Dodgers in the World Series. It had everything to do with the flooding of Harvey. And um, Vice Sports wrote this. Well, they have the video linked here. What you are watching above is 8 minutes and 33 seconds. I, I don't know if that's really the true video length. It's, I think it's funny they did that. Of commentary that intends to prove that the World Series and all sports really was rigged. It involves Matt Harvey, Hurricane Harvey, Sports Illustrated, Gematria, an alphanumeric cipher that assigns a numeric value to words and phrases, and Charlie Morton's pitch count. See, Charlie Morton, man. Telling my college today, man, Charlie Morton was a big part of that World Series riddle. Again, that was the Astros' 56th season. The video comes courtesy of a guy named Zachary K. Hubbard, and he is convinced that everything is rigged. Well, I don't say everything's rigged. You know, that's a, a misleading statement. I show that the world of sports is rigged. The world of politics is rigged. News media is bullshit. It's propaganda. It's mind control. That's what I show. I don't say that everything in the world is rigged. So, bullshit sentence. Anyway, news, politics, the weather, sports, everything. Well, and I'm not wrong about those things. These, these, are, the, these, are, the sta these are the statements that are the program. I expose real information like how the U.S. government has admitted to weather warfare for more than 50 years. The Royal Air Force in the U.K. first admitted to weather warfare in 1952, showed that they had the technology to induce flash flooding that could cause fatalities in a community. In 1952, this was admitted to. You don't think that they can cause flash flooding in the 2000s? In 2017? If you don't know the track record, I said what day Texas needed to look out for for flooding, which was the day it did flood, August 27th, 2017, the day Stevie Ray Vaughan died in history, whose best-selling album was Texas Flood, and there's a specific reason why that date. date had everything to do with flood. And... Shortly after that, I caught the news clip on Fox News of a woman saying her house didn't flood in Houston and she felt like she won the World Series. And the next thing you knew, Matt Harvey was the first pitcher in Houston pitching after Harvey. And I said, look at that mockery. They even have the baseball season schedule 
planned with this scripted, military-infused flooding and purposeful property destruction in Texas. And for those of you who are watching that don't get it, you really need to get it. The people who control this nation, who distract you with things like rig sports, suck up all your time and energy with entertainment so that you live in, you know, virtual reality instead of reality, these same people control, you know, the financial interests of this world. And their banking Ponzi scheme always needs reasons for more lending. When you destroy a whole bunch of anything, whether it's from weather warfare or warfare, somebody needs a loan for repairs, which comes from the banks, which, you know, keeps the whole Ponzi scheme going. That is what's going on in the world. And the sports, you know, it's no different than when you learned about in Rome. You know, at the time of the destruction of Rome, everybody was distracted with the Colosseum. It's the same shit. So... Yeah, I do realize the hypocrisy in the stuff I'm doing right now. I do realize that by helping people win at gambling, it kind of keeps them in that circus. But I'm also edu I mean, a lot of people who follow me and who are, you know, winning money, they're also waking up to like, oh shit, there's some really fucked up stuff in this world. So I, you know, if you ever watch my live streams where we do code sports, I also talk values and common sense and money management. Anyway, I, you know. I'm trying to get this movement further, and sadly, the only people who want to invest in this movement are the people who want to gamble. If it wasn't that way, this isn't what would be going on, but this is the reality of the situation, and I didn't make the game, you know. We all got to play the game. So, anyway, this article, though, it just, everything it makes fun of is the truth. And it was the second time the mainstream media did this to me. If you go to uh, AFC and NFC Championship games... And um, same thing. And that was because we had exposed what Super Bowl 50 would be in October. We had named the two correct teams, who would win, who would be the MVP of the Super Bowl, why there would be a Black Panther tribute at the game, why there would be a tribute to Super Bowl 24. Everything happened. Broncos beat Panthers. Von Miller was MVP. Beyonce got criticized for dressing as a Black Panther, and the Broncos won with 24 points because the Broncos got smoked in Super Bowl 24 by the 49ers who hosted Super Bowl 50. In San Francisco's 50. That Super Bowl was on the 38th day of the year. It was the golden anniversary. Gold equals 38. Colorado equals 38. They're in the 38th state. You know, Peyton Manning, number 18, his 18th season, opens the game with an 18-yard pass to number 81. <laughs> so, let's see. Maybe it'll finish 5-1. They put up a stat yesterday for um, the Dodgers game. First time in baseball history that so many runs were scored on two outs and two strikes. Two outs and two strikes. And that's that's what I was talking about. That it's just all right, Yankees win at five one. Houston Astros fifty one. You know. That's what it's pointing to. So the Yankees have swept the twins and they swept the Twins 10 years ago as well. Same round. ALDS, 3-0. And Louie, Louie 16, leads the Yankees to their 16th straight win over the Twins. That was the best baseball riddle of the day. Riddles were tight in baseball today, but that was the best one. The stadium aim equals 53, 16th prime. And again, that's why you got to be picky and choosy. You got to find the best riddles of the day. I just kind of wish the score would have been 5 3 because it would have paid that extra tribute to 16, but I see what they did with the 5 1. All right, dropping some uh, information for those that can put two and two together. Let me say what's up to the chat real quick. Yeah, Super Bowl 50 was just so easy to call based on all the stuff they were coding, the stories out there. It was just too easy. Yeah, that's true. Sweep and Twins both equal 22. That's true. The 1996 flood from Portland to Salem? You think I would remember that, but I wonder what areas were flooded. That's 60 miles of real estate. I got to go back and revisit that. I was in middle school when that happened. 
the so our uh, resident moderator she says um, you can even visit the actual birthplace of modern soccer the Freemason Tavern in London it was here in 1863 that the Football Association was founded and again football has a lot of connect with Masonic that name Yeah, George W. Bush equals 58. Bush alone equals 58. He supposedly won the election with 271 electoral votes, the 58th prime. For the person who said, do I mostly do sports? These days I do, but um, no, I cover everything, so... Thanks for a uh, link in the book. I appreciate it. Okay, if you want to get in touch with um, Rambo, I, I got to, I, as sad as it is, I have not saved Rambo's phone number. I need to do that in my phone. He needs to be saved on speed dial. A lot of people reach out to me and say they want to contact Rambo. Well, once the website's built and Rambo's work's featured on the website, there'll be a way to contact him. So instead of having to connect through me, you know, you can connect directly with Rambo. That website is not far out. Yeah, Shakira and J-Lo. Shakira's going to turn 43 years old the day of the Super Bowl. Football equals 43, like Masonic, like Yale. Again, American football credited to the Scottish Rite Freemason, Walter Camp, who went to Yale. Yeah, Rambo does great stuff, that's for sure. His work's amazing. There was a football game with a score of 222 to nothing. I did not know that. And that's funny because the guy who had the big game today, it was his 222nd day of his age, and you're saying that game was October 7th, 1916. So 103 years ago as well. Scottish 103. Yep, that's right. They said that number 22 reached a speed of 22.3 miles per hour. And yeah, on Patreon, before the game was played, we identified him for a big game. We thought he'd have two touchdowns. Number 22, it was his 222nd day of his age with all those twos. Why not two touchdowns? So yeah, I was laughing my ass off when he had the first two touchdowns of the game. The Huntington Beach explosion. I didn't do much work on that, but here, if you don't follow my blog, you guys, again... Follow my blog to see if I know about a story. Because if I know about a story, I definitely did a blog post on it. And, um... Hold on. There it is. So here's what I caught. Huntington Beach... Hold on. Did I spell it wrong? Hold on. Jeez, I'm so bad lately. It's because my keyboard is... Okay. Huntington Beach... Hmm. Hold on. I see I made a mistake with Huntington Beach. But they had this story. All right, so here's what I, I read about. Huntington Beach restaurant owner fighting for his life after Oktoberfest electrical explosion that injured four others. There's four again. A Huntington Beach restaurant owner who asked patrons to leave the area near the site of a transformer before it exploded and rattled a crowded Oktoberfest celebration on Saturday night was badly burned and fighting for his life, his family said the next day. Post on the Facebook page for Old World Village's German restaurant identified the owner as Bernie Bischoff. The blast happened around 8 p.m. as Bischoff led two firefighters to the eateries patio area where he had detected a smell from an underground vault that held three transformers, the LA Times reported. The impact knocked them down, said Battalion Chief Jeff Lopez with the Huntington Beach Fire Department. So, what stood out to me is this guy's name, Bishop, equals 62, like Oktoberfest, like Mason, right? And then Bernie Bishop is 115, like Masonic, and Bernie Bishop is also 74, like Masonic. So, um, again, I, I just always find it interesting how... The numbers in the people's names and the stories, you know, the things that grab the national headlines, they just always point in one direction. And I swear, it's just this club, this club of, you know, people, the exclusive Masons just running their rituals and 
you know, what does this story ultimately do? It gets the name of the business out there, right? Do you think maybe food sales are going to go up after this? I imagine they will. People, oh, I read about that place. Let me go check. Let me go support them after the tragedy, that type of thing, right? So. And, and there's also some other greater ritual and component that you have to think more about. Yeah, people are questioning the 222 to nothing. Like, how do you score that many points? So that's, what is that? That's uh, 31 touchdowns would be 217 points. So, you know, be like grown men, I guess, uh, playing against toddlers. Well, but then you got to live in Las Vegas. So th that is something I could do. That is something I could do. If I wanted to, I could just be selfish, you know? I could just stop helping other people win and I could just move to Las Vegas, be in a city that I hate, and um, make a bunch of money gambling. And that would do a whole bunch. Well, you know, sometimes I think if actually if I did go do that and just focused and put all my time into being real successful at gambling, maybe I could build up a large enough sum of money to come back and then achieve the mission that I'm trying to do by getting a community of people in the tens of thousands that I've educated to support at a rate of a dollar a month, you know? It's too bad that that actually might be the solution. It's like, okay, you, you tried to educate the world for six years, working your ass off every single day, and that group couldn't come together for a dollar a month to make it happen. Maybe you just really got to go, you know, pull up your boots, move down to Vegas, and gamble every single day. <laughs> Wouldn't that be tragic? Ah. So anyway... Plus, you know, I'm still up here supporting my girl, helping her get through school. Someday she'll be um, done with school. And I don't know. Maybe we can move down to Vegas. Maybe that can be the side hustle. Thanks for uh, who, who gave the, um, the super chat. I see somebody left a dollar in the super chat. Thank you very much. I missed the comment, but I appreciate it. One dollar at a time. So... All right, you guys, it's getting late. It's 10 p.m. I'm going to wrap it up. I was up late last night. Need to get some uh, some makeup sleep tonight. So there it is. Another day of rig sports by the numbers. Louie gives the Yankees 16 straight. <laughs> the 49ers game, we called it all about 78 before it's played. The Browns get 78 net passing yards. I mean, when was the last time you saw that? A, a modern NFL game with less than 100 yards passing by the whole team? <laughs> Ah, it's too good, man. All right, you guys. We'll leave it there. Radio show Wednesday night. Maybe I'll do another live stream before then. We'll see. Till next time, Truth Seeker.